in uh, changing the world. <laughs> How'd that go? I don't know. We'll, we'll let you know after we figure it out. <laughs> you were in Swifty land, as we'll say. I've, I've been having fun. Too. Okay. Here's in, in the box. I want to see who's picking San Fran and who's picking KC. Let's see what's going on here. I hate both of them, so. All right, Stan, San go Chiefs. Yo, dude. I'm, go, I'm going for San Fran. You're friend. in Swiftyville, brother. San Fran. You're in Swiftyville. I'm teasing. I got to go Kansas City. I'm Kansas. I'm Just, going Kansas well, the question, City the question is who you think is going to win, right? Yeah. Well, I think Casey's going to win, but I'm going for uh, San Fran. <laughs> I actually wanted Detroit, but I, you know, I I wanted that underdog. You know, I love. Yeah, I did too. I was voting for them. I love that fight in the belly. You got to come out and get at it. Yeah. So, uh, all right, let's go one more second here. We'll get rolling in a second here, everybody. Ooh, Dre's going San Fran. McCaffrey's the dude, man. That guy can put his head down and run. That's called being the last born, very smart Stanford, ninth in the family. He just gets at it, man. You got to love him. There's nothing stopping him. All right, let's go ahead and get rolling, guys. So today, today is today. Yay, how exciting is that? Um, today is the first day of the rest of your life. I feel like I should be doing motivational speaking today. That's what I'm in the mood for. <laughs> um, anyways, so uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, today is going to be an interesting day because we're going we're gonna to change it up a little bit and talk about personality profiles. I'm going to actually turn it over to Craig. Lurich, who's Mr. Disc Man. He he also threw the disc in college. Um, and that's why he looks like that. And uh so we're gonna let Lurchie talk about the disc profile. I think he gave you everybody a, a thing to do last week. I don't know if anybody actually did it. Um you know, you know me, you know, I don't actually do anything but make stupid jokes. Um so Craig, why don't you go ahead and uh, take it away and let's have a conversation about personality profiles and disc and all that stuff. Cool. All right. First of all, we're gonna have this in participatory participatory event today. That means everybody's going to come off Mike, Mark, Mike. And as we do this, I'm going to call on you. I'm going to ask you for some things. So the panelists are all going to be involved. Second of all, all 45 of you to come are going to be involved in the chat. Because when I ask something, I ask you to put it in the chat. That means put it in the chat. That means I'm going to be able to repeat what's there and we're all going to be involved in this. Okay, so DISC. Sign of hands, anybody, everybody in the chat. How many people have ever taken a DISC personality test? All right, so we have one, two, three, okay. How many people took the free test that I put out there? Come on, I got Julie that says yes, come on. Everybody else, none of you have ever taken this test? <laughs> all right, all right, I get yes, 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 yes. Chris, I definitely know your personality. You're definitely, we'll talk about you in a little bit. All right, good. We got a bunch of yeses. So we're not coming off having to start that way. All right, first of all, there is no rule and there is no better, worse, or all the above about DISC. DISC personality test was arrived. There's the ones that do 28 things and this thing and that thing. This is the most simplistic. You actually can break it down into the four quadrants. A D, an I, an S, and C. We have all of these four personalities that we're going to discuss in us. And the whole world has every one of these personalities in them. But they have a primary and they have a secondary. So if you only have a primary and a secondary, I'm going to ask you a question. Dennis, if you're only focusing on two of the four personality traits, how much business are you losing? Oh, I'm sure quite a bit. You you need oh, to know on, your as far as clients, all of them. Half of one hundred is what? Half of one hundred is what? Yeah. All right, fifty percent. You're losing fifty percent of the people out there because you are not being a chameleon. So I want to see how many people in the thing here over over on the right hand side in the chat. How many people want to increase their business minimally, minimally twenty five percent by doing nothing other than changing themselves? in the way they communicate. No cost, no nothing, just changing. There you go. Me, 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 I do, I do. All right, good. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, so what I want you to do is take a piece of paper and I want you to write down the quadrants. I want you to write down the four quadrants like this. Okay, write them down like that. You got it? This is participatory. 
Okay, let's go. Dennis, get a piece of paper. I know you're Mr. Computer Savvy. All right. Now, we're going to put D. We're going to put I. We're going to put S. S and C. You see how you do it? I made a mistake. So it's D, I, S, and C. Oh. Do I need to redo it? You got it? All right. So now that we got that. Now, underneath, I want you to put some bullet points. D personality. D personality is, remember it this way, dominant. So write the word dominant next to that. Then next to I, put influential. Okay. Then next to S, the one that I always remember is, is um, nurturing. Answer. Okay. And C, calculating. I, for some odd reason, I can't remember the other S word. It's my sometimers. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. But that I remember it always as being nurturing. School teacher is an idea. So, all right, let's get into these personality traits. Remember, you're going to have your true identity no matter who you are. Three words, write these words down. And I've used it in the past. I use it with my kids. And I use it when I'm teaching also to the people in my organization. Behavior never lies. A lot of people on the panel have heard that before. How many people have heard me say that before? Behavior never lies. Your true identity is who your true identity. When you were born, you were born perfect. And when you die, you were born perfect. The difference is you just have a gap in between. You have a dash. The dash is everything we do from point A to point Z, right? But how do we learn the things we learn? Stabilizing. All right, thank you. Thank you, Justin. All right, so how do we learn those things? How do we learn in between? We learn from the people around us. We learn from our parents. We learn from our friends. We learn from our uncles, our aunts, our bosses, um, social media, TV, all that stuff. Okay? So as we're learning things, it's creating different personalities within us. Each job we do, each thing we do, we have a role. There's a difference between identity and role. Identity is who you are. Role is what you're playing. Okay? When we come to work, there's a lot of times we come to work with different roles. Let's talk about different roles. What are the examples of some different roles? Matt, tell me a couple roles out there. And don't tell me Kaiser, Sour, and Pretzel. Let's go. A couple of roles that you asked me? A different role you could be. What roles could you be in life? Okay, anybody else want to jump on? Mitch. I don't quite understand the question. Okay. 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 You, talk, you talk about different roles you play. So like I, different I roles, roles you play in life. What yeah, kind so of roles do people play? So teach teacher. So being a supporter, for example, is that what you mean? You could be you could be a, a parent, you could be a yeah. brother, you could be a I husband, you, you could be realtor. Okay. Comedian. Comedian, we can be Mitch, we can be a singer. Rock right. star. But how do we learn these roles? How do we learn these roles? We learn them from the people around us, right? right? So here's a question for you. We have our identity and we have our role. How many times have people gone into the office to do work, but their phone's blowing up from their cousin or their sister or their brother who's bitching about something and You've got to stop thinking about being realtor and, and, and be that person. How many people have had that happen? It's distraction, right? Well, here's how I want you to think about it in the future. How many people, we've all been to Walt Disney World, or you've seen Walt Disney World, or you've heard about Walt Disney World, right? Let's talk about going into Walt Disney World. As you go into Walt Disney World, to the left of the park, if you want to go that way, you go in and you go to this area where Goofy is. I love Goofy. If you ever go to Disney World, hug Goofy for me. Cameron was there. I said, hey, Cameron, send me a picture of Goofy. I love Goofy. All right? So, but inside of Goofy, Goofy isn't a real animal. Okay, he is. I love him too. Goofy is actually a person that came in and is playing that role. So we have Matt Battiata, who is playing Goofy. All right? Now, when Matt gets in Goofy's outfit, is Matt, I'm only here for an interview guy? I'm only here for the job. No, 
Is Matt allowed to talk about his surfing? No. Matt has to be goofy. He gets to play dope, 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 all that stuff. Hug kids, kiss kids, hold hands, and all that stuff. Okay? He has to change his role to what he's being. So we understand we got Goofy over here. Now let's go in and we're going to go to the right. Now as you go into the right and all the way to the far side, you have Cinderella's castle. Now we have Jean Marie Smith, Cameron's cousin, comes in to play Cinderella. Okay? Now question, Karina, if you were to play Cinderella, could you go in and be Karina? Selling yeah. real estate, the luxury agent that kills it in, Cal in Florida? No, I'd have you to play Cinderella. <laughs> Cinderella. All right. You know the task. You know the softness. You might not like the bright red lipstick, but guess what you're wearing? The bright red lipstick. Okay? That's right. So again, you're in the role. But when we go to work, we run into the problem or in the challenge. Problem, oh, by the way, problems can be solved, everybody, if you have enough money to buy the problem away. That's my number one quote of the day. If you have enough money, you don't have a problem. Solve the problem, make it go away, and get on to your next step. So as you solve the situation and you go into it and you think about it, if you come into work and you have a person calling you, you're trying to play realtor, and you just left being the kids and you were mom, think of this next time. If you go into Disney World and you try to be goofy, and you try to be Cinderella, which are two different roles, what do you end up being? Oh, a goofy <laughs> Cinderella. So the rule is, is you got to focus on the role in which you're doing at that time. Playing realtor, be realtor. Playing husband and wife, shut down. Play husband and wife. Play mom. Play brother. Play squash player. Play whatever. Be a golf player. Turn your phone off. Be a skier. Be what you are in the present. We've talked about be in the present. You will be better off when you're doing your other tasks. Okay. Now, as you learn your roles, okay, as you learn your roles, you're going to know and you're going to see that now there's personalities in those roles. There are different people that are playing those roles, but they have different personalities that are there internal. You know their role, Mr. Buyer, Mr. Seller, whatever it might be, Mr. Protector. Mr. Uncle Louie, who's coming to the inspection and knock it down, who hasn't bought a house in 30 years. How many people have had one of them? Put them in the chat. Put them in the chat if you have. I have them. Now we're going to deal with the personalities on. We talked about the D, the I, the S, and the C. The controls and ultimately works on the inside integrity and the inside person of the role that they're playing. You've got to figure out how to become the chameleon. Once you figure out your own identity, you will know how to tone it down and how to ultimately work with them in their mode, not your mode. People like to work with people like themselves. Agreed? Yes. People like to live with people like themselves. Agreed? People like to hang out with people like themselves. Agreed? People like to hang out with good golfers, not me. Agreed? Yes. So here's the deal. We're going to learn how to do that trait. So let's talk about the D personality. So real quick, those of you who have taken the test, put in the chat, how many are you D personalities? If you're a D, just type in D, 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 D. Type in if you're a D. Dennis is a D. You're a double D. We're not going there. Dennis is a double D. Anybody else? Chris, you are definitely a D, a flaming D. You're off the chart. All right, Mitch, you are that. We're going we're gonna to cover that. You're definitely a high D at times, too. Anybody else, Pete? Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? All right, we got Randy. All right, we got D. All right. I like Dave, and he's got his – you've also got some other trait in you. I'm going to bring that up later on because of your numbers in there. All yeah. right. All right. So a lot of the people on here on the screen are A personality or D personalities. It just comes with our trait. It comes where we're at. But there's also means we're other sides. Let's write down a couple things to what a D does, how a D works. How are Ds? Ds are direct and to the point, right? They like bullet points. You send them a long email, they're going to scratch it off. You're going to bullet point them. How many times have you walked in a D's office 
And they're like, okay, what do you want? And they're like, I need to talk to you about something. Okay, get to the point. How many people have heard? They're huge on the word, get to the point, get to the point. All right. Have you ever tried to give feedback to a D? It's not easy. It's like giving, it's like water off a duck. It rolls on them and it rolls off. They really don't give a rat's patootie about it. But you need to work with them. We're going to get into how to read them next. But right now, those are the key personality traits that we all know. Let's talk about the eye. How many people know the eye? If you're an eye personality, put it in there. I see some of the people are mixed. And again, you don't, you have a primary and a secondary. All right. All right. A D is definitely, Richard said, the New Yorker. Exactly. Uh-huh. I got I, Brian's and I, I got Katrina. I got Karina. She's a high D, high I. All right. All right. Eyes. Okay. Eyes are people that are influencers. They're not shy. They're the person that um, kind of walks into the party and says, I've arrived. How many people know that? How many people have a significant other like that? Do you want to strangle sometimes? Okay. All right. Um, they like to wear bright colors. They're name droppers. They want to go where everybody else goes. Feedback to them has to be very light and airy. I heard a great story one time. I don't know how many people know Alan Dom, but Alan Dom's a, a good friend of mine. Told this story and how you deal with it. Because I taught him D-I-S-C. We would walk around the city of Philadelphia saying, what person now do you think that is? What do you think that is? Who do you think the waitress was? It becomes a game. you got to have fun with it. The way you learn something is practice it. Do it with your kids. Do it with your significant other. Do it with everybody and just start having some fun. But we went into a client's place of his one time, and it was a mess. Nothing against people that have cats. It had cat hair everywhere. We He walked out. It was all over him. His shoes were horrible. He walked out, and he finally picked up the phone and got downstairs and said, Mary, we got to talk about the cleanliness of your apartment. She goes, oh, well, and I think it's fine. She goes, no, Mary, we seriously, we've had this conversation. You got to do it. She's like, oh, I cleaned up. He goes, Mary, let me tell you something. I had to go out and get my shoes polished again after coming in with so much hair all over me and get a roller out. Oh, well, and you're so funny. I'll do it better. You see the difference instead of saying, Mary, you got to clean it up, like a D would say. He made it light and airy that way. So as you say things to I personalities, you need to make it fun. You need to make it an involvement. You need to give them um, kudos. They're given an award. They love to get awards. They love to get little pins and buttons. Okay? Now let's talk about the S personality. How many S's are in here? Come on, put your S in. It's okay. We have any S's on the panel? I'm thinking... Tracy, you're a little, little S? You're a little nurturing, no? Out in California, Tracy? Yes. All right. All right. I figured that one. I read that one right away. I knew that. <laughs> yes, I am. My electricity keeps going out, so I, uh, okay. I have to keep logging on. But yes, that's me. All right. There you go. See, we're going to learn how to read people as you read them. All right. Super S. We have Justin Super S. We have some others. All right. S personalities are stabilizing. They're calm, they're slower, they're nurturing. Easiest way to think of an S is grandma, school teacher. They don't like change quickly. They won't make a decision automatically. They like to nest. They wanna make sure everybody around them is better, is okay before you, before them. Even you as their agent, you could show a house and they're like, I'm okay. What do you think? You got to get over that. What did you notice in my tone also as we're talking? Slowed down, lowered the volume. A D personality will run an ass over, run them over. For the Ds, put a sign of hands or put me into the, into the chat. D personalities. Do S's drive you absolutely batshit crazy? Yes? Oh, yeah. Heidi's saying yes, they do. Me, 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 LOL. Yeah, they do. But guess what? You D's drive the S crazy, because the, but the S isn't going to tell you because they don't want to hurt your feelings. 
They want to be everybody's friend. I actually had an S client one time and it worked. We were walking the house. I said, Jane, why don't you want to buy this house? It's perfect. And she goes, hmm, I think I know why. I said, why? I kind of have fun being out with you and I'm safe. I'm like, how about we make a deal? You buy this house, I'll stop by and see you regularly. Deal. She wrote an offer. I had to give her the okay. I had to give her permission. It was okay to buy the home. S's need permission sometimes. They need guidance. Hold their hand, walk them there, and they'll be calmer and they'll understand it. S's are huge on making sure that you that they, they're not going to get hurt in the end, that they're not making a bad decision. Matt Batty at his program. If you don't like the house, I'll sell it for you for free in 18 months. Are you okay with that? Perfect for an S personality. Now let's talk about the other one, the, the, the final one, C. Just because you're a C doesn't mean you're the last. It just means as it breaks out, it's easy to remember. C personalities, calculating. They're exact. With a C personality, they're very number oriented. How many C's are in, in the in the group here? If you are, all right, we have Valley, who is a D, a, a D and a C. Yes, wild combination. It's a it's all good. You have some of that. Heidi's got some of that. We all have a little bit. The C personality is can be very, very regimented. If you were to call a C, and we're going to talk about how you can tell in the future, but if you were to call a C, the word you never use with a C is the word about. You never use the word about. You don't say, oh, by the way, the taxes are about 17000 No, they're $17,284.23. They go on exact. They're calculating. They're never going to sign an agreement of sale unless they've read it. They will read, they're, the guy, they're the ones that before they go to escrow or settlement, they read the whole mortgage document without putting anybody to sleep. You guys had them? Karina, have you had those guys that sit at settlement? Five hours later, they're sitting there still reading the agreement? Yes, but if you're smart, you know that they are those type of people and you tell the title company and the lender up front so they can see the boilerplate contracts and you have a conversation with your C's and let them know we do not have four hours because there's other closings coming in. So we need to address your questions now. Ding, ding, ding. If you didn't write that down, write that down. That's huge. I was going there. Yes, absolutely. And again, Justin just said they're engineers. They're architects. Architects Attorneys. actually have... What? Attorneys are a big one. Attorneys, too. major. Attorneys are D's and C's. They're that one to cross that line of going, you know, the other way a little bit. They're all there. Okay. C's, I personalities are driven crazy by a C. C's go nuts with I personalities because I's have no boundaries. I's don't have lists. C's have lists. All right. We all get in some CPAs. Exactly. By the way, you want an accountant who is a C personality. If your accountant, and by the way, here's a little joke as we come in. Oh, hey, what was that, David? Or a pilot, you know, <laughs> oh, pilots. pilots, absolutely. Yeah, you want somebody that is right on, that is to every detail. You don't want an I pilot. No, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna go into some of these jobs next, but real quick, in the in the in the in the in the um, we're gonna go into colors and all that stuff that people wear and stuff. The C's. If you're if you, they're black and white, you really want an accountant that wears gray. So make sure that your C personality likes to wear gray too, because they're so analytical, they only know hard colors. They very rarely like to see the gray area. So if your accountant's really C, he's never going to find the gray area for you. All right. The other thing, how many people have seen somebody who is a D or a C who is quiet and then they go to a party and they get a drink or two in them and they light it up? Right? That's called, there's a lot of I in alcohol. Write that <laughs> down. There's a lot of I in alcohol. All of us have it. It's that little side that comes out and says, my devil's out. Pete, Cameron, all right, I got you. Okay, so we got our D, our I, our S, and our C definition so far. Am I good so far? Mitch, am I good so far? Do I need to add anything? Am I missing anything? We're good? Okay, everybody, you good? Okay. So let's go into some of the personality. Let's go into some of the things. Let's go into what colors, do, put them in the, what, co uh, what colors would a D personality wear in, in an outfit? What colors would they wear? Put it in the chat. 
Um, anybody want to go? Anybody? Raise your hand. I'm going to pick the panel. Somebody or I'm going to pick. David. David, what color would a D personality wear? Red. D? A D would wear red? I don't know. I'm reading in the chat. Someone okay. said. No, D. no. I'm talking about you. Okay. Yeah. What colors do you think? Black. There you go. Black? Blue. Navy, navy blue. Black. White. White, hard colors, hard primary colors, okay? What colors would an I personality wear? Rainbow. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Karina, what colors? I got orange, I got bright, I got Ye bright. Yellow. Neon, <laughs> orange, okay. Very good, very good. Exactly, they're going to wear louder colors. What is an S going to wear? What colors is an S going to wear? Put it in there. Trace. Beige. Be brown, beige. Go ahead. What neutral? Softer colors. Okay. What else? Car. Okay. Pastels. Okay. That's a little bit of an eye, too, but that's a soft eye. Go ahead. What else? Natural colors. Greens. Colors like that. Beige. We talked about that. Prints. The flowery print stuff. Not the not the Lily Pulitzer or whatever it is, which is really loud and pink. That's an eye. Confused as an S. All right. So we got that. What colors wouldn't so we have the S in those colors. What would a C wear? A C could your wear grays, your blacks, your gray. whites. Grays, your blacks, your your neutrals, real neutral. All right. Let's talk about cars. Dennis, cars. What kind of car would an I personality drive? Uh something something flashy. You, what's in Porsche. your garage? Maybe a Porsche, Dennis. Am I, am I Porsche? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So your auto ego is an I personality. You're Lurchy. no longer the D. Lurchy. Yes, you're definitely the, that. Lur Lurchy. But all of Dennis's car is white. Every single car is white. That's right. That's right. That's right. Because that's his, pers his primary personality is, is that. If he went with the lime green. No way. The lime green, he'd be off the chart I personality. But he's going with his D and C tendency that's feeding his I ego without alcohol. Because Dennis doesn't drink and drive. <laughs> but he does drink. I've been with him. All right. So we got that. All right. What kind of car would... So we talked about the I. What kind of car would a D drive? Mitch, you're a D. Give me an example. Give me an example of some cars. Come on. Uh, I, I drive sports cars too. So uh, um, That's your older ego. That's your secondary. Uh, um, MB Corvette. All right. A, a, That's a, K, a, K, a K car? Okay. Uh, okay. An SUV. Valley's right. An SUV. A big, a a big sedan. A big sedan. A, a big 7 Series BMW. Exactly. Yeah. Very good. They're going with the label, but they're going for I've arrived. I'm here. I'm, I'm Ranger. I'm pushing you out of the way. All right. Now let's talk about the C personality. What would the C do? Whatever they makes financial camera. sense. What was that? Whatever makes Prius. sense. What would make sense? What are the what are the a hybrid? I, I Prius. Prius. Hybrid. Hybrid. Come on, Prius, come on. Yeah. Come on, give me some makes. Come on, Cameron. Get in the game. Like Teslas, like the new uh, you know, Rivians, the new stuff that's battery powered, future, future you know, you're thinking about things in the future. Volvo, the Volvo, Volvo, Subaru, Lobo, yeah. Vol Saab, hey. Volvo, Subarus, all that stuff. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay. What's an S gonna drive? Honda, Oldsmobile, something, something safe, back to like, like a, very like safe, a, very like good, a Volvo. That fits in there, but what kind of the Volvo? What kind of the vehicle? Come on, wagon, the wagon, the wagon, a station wagon, Bingo. wagon, family wagon, station. minivan. How many people have had a minivan? Oh. <laughs> we had one, but we had it in lime green. It wasn't lime green. It was green color. <laughs> So it kind of had to, I had to have it for purpose, but I also couldn't come home with it out having a crazy color. So, all right. So now if you're meeting a client, you see them pull up in a car. You kind of can start reading by the color of the car, by the car, by the clothing they're wearing. All right. So now you're starting to figure that out. The challenge comes in is when they have a partner with them or somebody else with them. You need to figure out who's that controlling part and you'll figure that out in your own learning. But Right now, that's how you're going to start to read there. How many people have left messages for clients? 
and you've gotten the voicemail that sounds like this. I want you to tell me the voicemail of this one. Hi, I'm out right now. I'm playing with my kids. I'll be home because then I'm going to have to cook some dinner. But I'm sorry that I wasn't here for you. Would you please leave me your number? And I'd love to know your birthday too. What personality is that? Come on. Very good. S or a C. S or a C. S, 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 S. -S. Yeah. You guys are very good at over there. Very good. Very good. I love this participation bit. Okay. How about this one? Figure this one. Uh, John, I'm not here. Leave me a message. D. 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 Off the chart. That's a Chris job. That is all Chris. All right. You want to go to dinner? No. Not how about tomorrow? How about the next day? No. All right. I have so much fun doing this one. How about this one? This is John. And meanwhile, Jimmy Buffett's playing in the background. Hey, this is John. I'm going to the tailgate. I'm going to be at section K36. I'm going to be with all my friends. Yes, I, 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 I got, to, and by the way, I'm cooking. We're doing shots of tequila every five minutes till the game starts. Yes. Come see me. And by the way, just look <laughs> for me on TikTok. You'll find me. I'll be live. That's what personality. I, 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 exactly. Off the chart. I. How many people know some of those people? You. How many people want to strangle some of those people? <laughs> How many people with alcohol become those people? <clears throat> I'm on. I've seen a bunch of you with alcohol in <laughs> All right. <clears throat> then, then you have the C personality. How many have gotten this? This is John. I'm in a meeting for the next two hours. I'm returning phone calls at one o'clock and four o'clock. If that doesn't work, I apologize. Please leave your number three times and repeat your name and spell it correctly. Huh? C. Exactly. Exactly. C. All right. So we're learning some traits there just by hearing voicemails. You don't know the person. You just call and you learn some things. And I'm going to give you one last one, and then we're going to open up for some conversation on how to work with it. Handshakes. We all handshake. We all fist pump. D's are really good for fist pumping now. S's are really good for fist pumping now. But let's pretend we go back pre-COVID in the handshakes. How would a D, if I had somebody here, I'd, I'd probably bring, I'd probably bring Pete up. I'd make him do handshakes with me. A D personality is going to come in, they're going to give an all-in handshake and strong because it's showing a dominant, the dominant dog. Okay? That's where their hand is. They want to have the upper hand in that they're going to come in the deepest on you. How many people have had that handshake? You're like, yo, dude, what are you doing? And ladies. Sometimes you have ladies do it, and it's to prove the point that they're on your equal or not. That they want to say that I'm equal to you, which is good. I love that. Give me that good handshake. And by the way, if I get a bad handshake, how many people say yes or no? If you get a bad handshake, do you say, hey, by the way, let me fix this handshake. That wasn't a good one. You ever get that? You know what I'm talking about? Yes, Richard, yes. All right, so that's the D. Let's talk about the C. I'm going to go the other way. The C personality, let's think about this, is the person that comes up, goes to shake hands, touches your hand, goes one second, and then pulls her hand away. Not two seconds, not one and a half seconds, one second. Whoop, okay, I did my job. That's a C personality. The I personality, okay, which I am at times. I'm, I'm a D and I. I've actually learned to be more, and I'll tell that story in a minute. You come in. And you go to shake hands, but then you give the big hug. You hug so much, you actually absorb the person into your backbone. <laughs> How many people know the person that does that? How many people have seen me normally get that hug? I'm trying not to hurt you. I apologize. It's just my fill and ease coming out. All right. <laughs> and then you have, then you, Chase, that's Philly speaking with hands, by the way. So then you have your S. Your S is going to come in. They're going to put their hand over. How many people remember seeing? Presidents do that a lot, especially Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. Shook hands and always put their hand over. They're always touching, or they'll shake hands and they'll put their hand behind your elbow. That means you're safe. You're okay. I'm not coming in your space, but I respect you and I'm kind. Okay? So again, those are some easy ways to start reading. Remember, you have a, and by the way, the majority of the people in the world Majority of the people in the world in tests 
are I's and S's. 15 to 19 percent, they say, is D. 15 to 19 percent is C. Some tests actually show 23, 27 percent between them all. We have them all in us, but we have our two dominant while the other two drive us crazy. If you find out how to change your inner self and become a chameleon with this, you can up your income. If you don't want to do it, refer it to somebody in your organization or on your team who has the matching personality to them. So you don't lose the client. So you just don't throw them out. We're wasting 50% of the future money we can just because they don't fit our mold. Who says we're right? In their world, we're wrong. So let's get out of judgment. Let's have, go live in curiosity. I'm going to leave you with a quick story, and then we'll open this thing up to however the panel wants to handle it. Mrs. Lurch, after 37 years, her name's really Linda. I just have fun phrasing that. Um, learned DISC, and through the years, we've learned to communicate. They're usually one, two, and three minute. We don't fight anymore. They're one, two, and three minute discussions until she's right and until I realize she's right. I know she's right. I'm just being a deep personality sometimes, okay? The other thing is sometimes she will say to me, who am I having this discussion with? Is it Vinny? Is it Craig? Or is it Irene? My kids realize that on certain movies or things, I can even see a kid getting an award on the news and I get teary-eyed, okay? What personality is that? Come on, put it in. Come on, put it in. What personality is a person gets tear jerked over things? S. S exactly. S. Do I appear to have S in me? I seem to have learned to pull it out of me. I seem to have learned to bring it to the top of my point. But Vinny is my I personality. As much money as Vinny got in his pocket, he's going to spend. Vinny's going to walk in every bar. He's not going to wait. He's not going to do it. He is going to have a ball. He's 5% of the time. Vinny's a ball, but he's dangerous. No isn't in the vocabulary. Then there's my majority, which is D and S, or D and C, which is my majority. I'm mainly a D with some I and then the S, and then my Irene is S. So my wife, Linda, has learned how to have discussions with me due to the personality. She just calls him Vinny Craig or Irene, because now she knows how to fight. Does she need to make me feel good like I'm like I'm the thing? Or does she need to make me get nervous or whatever? So she's learned those traits. So learn those traits with your clients. You should actually put them, when we first put this into place, when I had my team going, we had a sticker on every person on the team. Red was for this one, blue was for this, green. So when you came to talk to them as another person on the team, you communicated the way they wanted to be communicated. On our team, on our client's file, we wrote, we had color stickers, red, this, the spouse, this. Sometimes you've got to be balancing a D with an S. Sometimes in a relationship, how many people have been on, a, on an appointment and are two different personalities? You could be bullet pointing with this person and you need to calm down and talk to the significant other, whether it's the male or female or, or partner or partner, whatever it might be in their term. Because you don't know that other person might be the person who's in control. You don't know until you find out. So... I wanted to add some fun to it. I know I took a bunch of time, but hopefully as you're going through learning this, you have these moments of seeing my idiocy on the screen here and having fun doing it and hopefully remember the points. So Mitch, back to you. Let's open this up to anything you guys want to add. Yeah, that's great stuff, Craig. And, and it's so funny because like everybody's sitting here and they go, oh yeah, 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 that is me. Yep, that's me. That's it. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so let's do this. Let's let's run around the room. Um, everybody get up, run around the room now. Uh, and um, in just two minutes on how you use personality, how you profile somebody before you meet with them or when you see them instantly. And uh, let's go ahead. I'm just going to start with uh, Karina because she's to my right. Go ahead, Karina. Okay. So um, I like throw, are we going to go with if we're seeing them in person, Mitch? Yes. Okay, great. So I, I quickly look at their cars, they drive, how they're dressed. As I'm walking up to shake their hand, I feel how they shake my hand. And I've typically had conversations with them before. So I've already started analyzing the speech patterns and I'm a high D and a high I. So I have to be careful that I don't overpower my clients. 
but I was raised in a sales environment. So I've been a chameleon since I was about five. <laughs> so I'm very easy to slip into the other two, um, the S and the C. Um, I happen to live with somebody now that is definitely a C and an S. <laughs> so it's a balance. But when you understand the personality traits and you can kind of mirror image them, you, you'll you either mirror your client if you're if you watch what you're doing or they'll mirror you. So I try to mirror them. So I'm keeping them at a comfort level. And that's how we how we have our conversation. So I have to remember when I'm with us um, with a C or an S that I'm not you know, I'm in Florida, but I am really a Jersey girl and I can talk fast and not on purpose, right, Craig? It's just the way we talk. <laughs> and and that goes into that high D, right? I want to, I don't want an agent to be like beating around the bush. Tell me what the problem is and let's get to the, the solution so we can get move on in that listing or the whatever the issue is. And so if you don't take that moment and start really paying attention. I also like the five love languages. I kind of incorporate that with the disc profile. So I know if they like touch gifts, whatever, and you can fill that out as you're communicating with the clients. And so if they like touch and I'm making sure that, you know, I'm giving them a hug at the end or whatever the situation is. So, or words of affirmations, but sometimes that words of affirmation is how they're going to look in that house, right? It's not like necessarily for them. So if you know the disc profile and you really love the psychology behind people like I do and Craig does, it really makes it fun to be able to communicate with them. But I will tell you one thing, if you are connecting with another high D and you're a high D or whatever your primary is, and you're not connecting with the spouse or the significant other or the other, whoever the other decision maker is, chances are you're not going to get them in a house where they decide something together. You have to take time to make sure and I've always been very good about that, but I almost lost the transaction last year because the husband was such a high D and he just voiced everything he hated about every house that we love, we went into. And I actually like that guy because I know what he doesn't want. So I'm going to put him in what he wants, right? Like before the end of the day, we are buying a house because I'm not going to do this again. <laughs> We're going to get it done, but I'm getting all the info from him. But I forgot to listen to the wife because she was so quiet and, and mild in comparison to her very loud husband. And so at the very end, when we finally found a new construction house that checked all his boxes, she goes, I don't know. I think we have to think about it. And I went, oh, crap. Right. And so I sent the new construction agent away and I said, Let, we're going to spend some time in the house. And I and I finally got time with her now that the husband was like chilled out. And, and I asked her, I said, well, what is it that you have to think about? I never went to say, OK, go think about it. What do you have to think about? Like, let's work this out. Right. And so it turned out that the long story short, they had a third love seat they, they got from the furniture store for free and she had nowhere to put it in the living room. And there was a younger couple. So I said to her, I go, well, let's lay out your furniture like in our heads, right? So we laid it out. We had her parents there. Well, the husband evidently likes to game. So what were they going to do with the fourth bedroom since they didn't have kids? It was going to be his gaming room. Well, he needed something to sit on. So there went the love seat and we wrote the contract right then and there. And so, but you have to listen. And so she was clearly on the S, right? She wasn't worried about the dollars. She was worried about how her people would feel in her home. And so you definitely, this comes into play in your personal relationships, your business relationships. Craig, I cannot thank you enough for teaching everybody and bringing it back up to our forefront of our mind because it is so important for us. So thank you. Great job. Uh, let's go to Mr. Yabor, Brian. All right. Yeah, thank you, Craig. Um, I saw pretty much me and a lot of that. Um, listen, I'm going to be real quick. I have two ways that I have always figured out who I'm dealing with. And it's two questions. One, when I'm last week, we finished up being with sellers. Here's a great question. I didn't get a chance to talk about it. Whenever you're sitting down with a seller and Matt and uh, David, you guys probably do the most listing presentations right now, business-wise, try this question before you go into your presentation. Hey guys, I see you've lived here, you know, seven years. Can you do me a favor? Take me back to the day you saw this house first. Share with me why. Why did you buy this house and get quiet? You will learn so much about them. Personality-wise, if they're married, if there's two people, if there's one, why did they buy the house? Because here's what they're going to tell you. They're going to give you all the secrets of what it was that they either liked or didn't like about the listing when they bought it. 
So you're going to know what they're going to expect for their buyer. So real simple question. You're going to find out their personality very quickly. I don't want my clients to go through that, Brian. I want a lockbox. It was hard for us to get in. It looked like crap. It wasn't taken care of. Whatever the story is, you're going to learn their personality real quick. Secondly, with Karina, what you were just talking about, I call this my avatar buyer. I have an avatar that I like to have the buyer, the mold of the buyers. I ask this question at the end of my buyer consultation. You guys, we're going to be so good at what we're looking for for you that I'm only going to show you one house. And I want to make sure that you guys are okay making an offer on the very first house you see with me. We're going to look at one house because that, that discussion about the chair and the couch, you guys need to have that before we look at property. So I need your wish list 100% non-negotiables and something you're willing to deal without for the perfect house. But we're only going to see one and we're going to make an offer on the one that's going to be the best one or we're going to learn from that one and then we're only going to see one more the next time. Are you guys okay with that? And I get that because a D and an I and an S and everybody needs to understand they only, they only need to see one house together. And that's how I've done that. Build your avatar or ask that question. Thank you. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. All right, let's go to let's go to Tracy. And she's sitting there so stoic looking. <laughs> oh gosh, I was just really just taking it all in. Hey. <laughs> so I sort of do a lot of the same things as well. Uh, we're really big on just creating a um, a client dossier. So really just digging into the internet, um, especially um LinkedIn, finding out who they are, who they associate with, of course, looking at social media, uh, the type of personality. Um, I will tell you this. Um, I had a neighbor who I knew I put them into a, a really nice lease here in Ladera Heights, and I knew that they were going to be buying soon. And I already knew that he was an analytical, so I wasn't exactly looking forward to the day. I thought, OK, I've got a good year before I actually have to work with him. And so, but it came sooner because there was a house on the market that they wanted. And I have to tell you that he was a super, super, super high D, you know, um, and I was prepared for the analytics. I wasn't prepared for the never satisfied. And so, and I'm sort of a really upbeat, grateful person. And this was the best transaction. I got him the house below market. Um, he had a great interest rate. Everything was great, but there was always something that he had to find something to be negative about. And I wasn't really ready for that because I thought it was such a grateful moment. And so um, that's something that I learned that I have to be ready for the, you know, just because you've got the numbers that they want and you know how to communicate with what they want, you have to be ready that they might find something not as pleasing as you would normally find it. So, um, and then the other thing is I am that strong handshake person. So I sort of go by, uh, their vibes as well um, and how they um, are they comfortable speaking to me do they still like they feel me to be in that persona or you know do they still need to be that architect do they still need to be that professional all the time so um, that's kind of what I do but I really like doing my dossiers because I think that's really interesting and just finding who they are and connecting immediately you know yep. great yeah and it is so important to can I mean that's that's what we do right and uh but, uh, and I'll share with you guys what I, what I do when we have time to get there. But uh, everybody else going on. Let's go to uh, Mr. S Mr. Next Gen. So this is a good one. I am definitely a high I and a C. My favorite color is purple. I love loud colors. Um, but I'm also very organized and very analytical. So I have throughout my luck of being in this business for so long, a lot like Karina, kind of became what I need to be. For example... Craig, that was a great example with the handshake. When I give typically the husband a handshake, it's very direct. It's very firm. You know, you get the kind of the shake. When I give the wife a handshake, I give her a soft handshake and I always put my hand on top of it. It's to make them feel safer. And I have always done that. Um, I have not <clears throat> been a, a huge proponent on trying to place people in DISC. Instead, what I've always done that has worked really well for me is I am huge on affirming and confirming. Whatever they say to you and however they say it, one, you're listening. I think that was something else Karina brought up is really listen to the person. But I, I, I really believe if you listen to them and you say it right back to them and just like they said it, maybe fast, maybe slow, maybe soft, right? Maybe really direct. However they're saying it, you can give it right back to them. 
that has allowed me because I am a true high, a high I and a C that I can be more direct or I can be more uh, stable or I can, I can be a little slower if I need to. Right. So whatever they're saying to you, give it right back to them. And that would be my biggest tip for people. When you first meet someone or you just pick up the call, cause we've all done that, right? We're hyped up, ready to do our calls. And the first one you get goes, hello. And you go, oh, hello, is this, you know, and then you got to slow down with her. So affirm and confirm. Uh, the biggest thing to remember everybody, words, your words that you speak are only 7% of all of our communication. Everything else is tone, it's tempo, and it's how you say it. So keep that in mind. I think those are my biggest things, though, um, that I always try to recommend for, for the different profiles. Very cool. Um, Peter. Oh. <clears throat> Well, I think I think the big thing, and I love what what Lurchie had to say, you know, be aware. It's about awareness. Be aware of who your audience is, and don't be attached to the outcome, right? So when you go in there, before you even get started, you should have an idea of what type of person personality traits you're dealing with. Are they the D, the I, the S, the C? What's motivating them, and what? What are they trying to accomplish? So I, I typically say before I get into any of my questions, what are you looking to accomplish with our meeting today? How could it be the highest and best use of your time? And I try to make them the priority. You know, lead from generosity. Don't lead from commission or income. You know, really say to somebody, how can I make this the best part of your day, or how can I make this the biggest win for you and your family? They'll share that with you and you'll know immediately, are they a driver? Are they an influencer? Are they a, a stabilizer or are they very calculated? Because the calculated people will say, well, you could share the info with us and the data. And I, I strictly just want to see, you know, how you're going to assess my house and what it's worth. And I want to see everything in writing that you know that's a C and you should know that ahead of time by asking them preliminary questions before you even go to look at their house or before you even have a strategy session to meet with them, to, to find them a house or to find them an investment. It's all about asking open-ended questions and making it all about them. And then metamorphosing into something well, metamorphosing into a trait that connects with them. So if they're a D, I'm going to get into D mode. If they're an I, I'm going to get into I mode. If they're an S, I'm going to mimic them and copycat them because that's what S is like. And I'm going to shift my stories accordingly. So the, court, the, the stories attach to the person. And the same with the C. The C, I'll cut out stories. Or I'll just be very matter of fact. And that's it. And I think those are the mo most important things. And that's why understanding the disc or understanding the person's position is so important because some of these traits, they want it done right now, right here. Some of the traits, they're like, save all the fluff. Just give me the meat of the matter. Give me, uh, you know, the, the nuts of it and just let's get done, right? Let's go. And then some of them, they want you to stay there for two hours and have tea with them and eat cookies and become their best friend. So it really depends, but it can shift how you connect with somebody and how you relate to them and create a true and deep relationship. It's very, very emotional at times. There's a lot of emotion in real estate. So you have to, you have to understand how to decipher that and really hone in on that because that's an important factor of it. You know, and, and be aware of where they're coming from. Some people only have a few minutes. Some people will, will not even be there. They don't care to be there. They just want to get it going. So don't say to a D, hey, we can get your house on the market in 10 days. They want the house on the market in 10 hours. You know, don't say to an I that the cabinets that they put in or the pop-up TV in the backyard to impress all their friends is not that impressive. You know, really focus on what are the best things and really hype it up, be excited and connect with that personality because eyes are usually excited, right? They're very emotional, excited people. They, they're like, hey, you know, let me show you this and let me show you that. And you got to get up to their level. You got to say, wow, that's unreal. How, who did that? I've never seen that before. That's so unique. 
They love uniqueness, right? The S is want to really understand the process and they want you to hold their hand. And like I said, the C's, all they care about is what's happening in the earth. What was the data? Who, who's my competition? What do I need to do? How is that process going to be? How are you going to execute it? And I want to see everything you're writing. And I want to see the whole plan mapped out. So those, those are the key traits on any type of meeting that you have. You have to have open-ended questions, but you have to be, be relatable. If you're not relatable, they'll tune you out. So I love this topic. Lurch did a great job. Great stuff. Uh, I've got to hop off. Dennis, I'm going to go to you and then get about a couple minutes for you, a couple minutes for Dave. i got to hop off because i got to hire at 1 o'clock. Uh, so again, Dennis, you start, and then Dave finish it up. And, uh, and Perfect. Guys later on. All right, see you, Mitch. I'm going to do a quick screen share, guys. I'm going to relate this towards team building. So let me do a screen share here. Hey, Mitch. Okay. So, Craig, you'll be proud of me. Look at this, buddy. Since 2004, I've been using disk profiles. So this is, I relate this to team building. So this is my number one all-time team member on my team. And look at his, look at his disk profile. You'll love this one, Craig. He's a high I with a lot of D. So his high I is going to connect with people. People are going to like him, but he's going to close the crap out of him because his D is going to come out and he's going to close the deal when, once he, once he gets relationship with them. Okay. That's, uh, that's the best. And I've had another girl, Ellen. That Craig, uh, that Pete knows, um, unbelievable. Same, same exact personality. Super high eye, a lot of D, really low everything else. They're scatterbrains. They can't figure out the paperwork. But I put them in a room. They're closing deals. This is another person I interviewed, and this one didn't make the cut. Right? Super high C, high S, D and I really low. So just not, just not cut off for a salesperson, to be honest. You know. Um, so, so this this particular person didn't make the team. So. That's my um, team building two cents. Go to the next person. Good job, Dan. All right, we're down to like two minutes. Who's going? I have one thing to say. Uh, I know David, I, was, I know David, you got something to go there. One thing to say, you guys, it's really important is that maybe if you're not a high D or a high I, one thing that one of my coaches many, many years said is that you can make yourself one of them. If you, if you, if you focus on it, you work on it, you can put in the effort and time to make yourself those things that you might be lacking to, to be able to fill in. So don't just think that because you're not right now, doesn't mean you couldn't ever so go ahead guys. hundred percent. Yeah. I only got a minute. So I'll be really quick. First of all, you guys, you got to understand people like people that are like themselves. So what Cameron said, get out of your box and jump in theirs. Think of it like that because, you know, as a D I could just say, you know, Dennis, you and I both know this is the right house. You know it. I know it. Let's buy the damn house. And and as if you say that to high D, you're fine. Problem is there's 18% of those, 82% you will offend them com completely, right? One of the things I like to do is I like to ask people what they do. I love what you did, um, Lurch, but about, you know, what do you do for a living? Uh, when you find out someone's an engineer or around here, pilots or whatever, you know who they are. I always look at their dress. The other, a great question to find out how to sell somebody is, you know, <clears throat> Dennis, how would you know if you found the right home? Shut up and listen. And if they go, oh, well, I just want to have a house that can I can entertain, you know, you know, high I, right? You know, if somebody's like, man, I need to know, you know, a house that's really efficient and all that, right? Then you know that they're, you know, they're a C. I think of C like CPA, right? And I'm going to end with a real story. I was working with this guy and his wife. They owned a Kubota dealership. We sold a house and we hit their house and we bought another one. And I said, hey, at the at the closing table, I always want to know how I can get better. And I said, is there anything I can do? And she goes, no, you're the first person that I've ever met that really understands me, but also knows how and understands my husband. And I thought about it and he was a, he was a very high C. And so what I did with him is I was talking about the facts and I was talking about how this move, selling this house and moving to the next one is going to be a great financial decision and all that. And then with her, she was a flaming eye. Right. And she wanted to entertain and she wanted to do that. 
And I said, you can you just imagine entertaining in this house and looking at this view and so on. So get out of your box, get into the uh, into someone else. And, you know, it's I love, you know, Lurt started out with be a chameleon, right? Whatever they are, that's what you need to do. And in order to do this, you got to get out of your comfort zone. You need to work to stretch and build your versatility. Most importantly, you'll need to learn how not to annoy the other people because, you know, give or take, if you're a high anything, 75% of the people are not going to relate to you. So that's it. We're over time. Let's, so there you have it. Bye. That was great, David. That was great. Tracy, we didn't get to hear great you. Great job, everybody. We're gonna yeah. Tracy. We, Tracy. Oh, no, I spoke this time. We oh, okay. spoke. Well, right. right. I'm sorry. I wanted to wish Cam another happy birthday. You know, Cam, you can actually go out and have a drink tonight now that you turn 21. <laughs> Put on all the sunscreen and go out and have a drink. That's awesome. That's all right. So, everybody, thank you. Thank you. you. Listen, <laughs> everybody for Cam's birthday, invite somebody to this mastermind next week. Everybody can use the help. We're in February. We're off and running. We're coming up to the Super Bowl of real estate, which is the last week in February that runs all the way to June. That's the number one market every year. So we got to ramp up into that market. So invite your friends to this. It will help them. I guarantee it. All right, or, or Lurch will buy you a cheesesteak. That's how we do it. We're offering cheesesteaks. But let's do that. Everybody, great input. Lurch, awesome time, man. Great, great yeah. job. See and good use job. those discs. All right, see you next week. Yep. Bye. Great, great job, guys. Great week. job, Craig. Have see a you. great day.